and welcome to another DE Hammer video. In today's video, we're going to be going over how to convert JPEGs or PNGs to SVGs. We will be going over image tracing. Now, I will be covering three different softwares today. We'll be going over image tracing in Illustrator, Inkscape, and Easel. Now, Illustrator is a paid software. Inkscape is open source. You can find a link for it down in the description. And Easel is free-ish. It is a web-based software. Uh, you can create a free account, but of course, to start really getting a lot of the features, you'll need to pay for the pro version. Didn't even look at pricing. I don't even use it. I use Carbide Create, but I had seen people said, hey, Easel has an image trace function. So let's try it out. Let's see how it works. But first, let's jump into Illustrator and do our first image trace. All right, so here we are. Uh, if you see this symbol over here, image trace, you can click that. Or, and if you don't see it there, you can go to window and go to image trace and it pulls it up. We're going to de-dock it right now. So I just Googled free logo. This came up and I thought it was a good example of curves and straight lines and a good mix. The only thing missing is text, but I'm always a big fan of just use your text tool, um, image tracing and text. Uh, I just, I don't like it. You're going to get better lines if you just find out what the font is. Um, I know fonts suck. All right. So let's jump into the image trace. Uh, we're going to turn on our preview here so we can see what's going on as we make changes. And we can already tell we lost some of that that in, inner white part there. Hue, uh, we're going to keep it as tracing results. Mode, black and white. Uh, if you did want to do uh, la uh, work for laser, you could do grayscale. And there's also a color option. But we're going to stick with black and white as we have a very simple two-color logo. All right, threshold 128. That's a good starting point. Um, Let's jump down into the advanced and for paths, let's bump that up to 64. Okay, it looked like it cleaned up some of the edges a little bit. Um, you know what, let's go ahead and turn off the white. There we go. All right, now corners and let's, before we get to corners, I'm gonna turn off the noise. There we go. All right, now, Let's add a few more paths here. Looks pretty good. Add some more corners. And it's not perfect. Then a lot of those are rectangles as opposed to more circle-ish or teardrop shaped. 82 is not bad, but let's see what happens if we go up to 88. A little bit better. Not bad, not bad. And maybe if we, let's pull up the corners a little bit more. Does that do anything? I'm looking at this guy right here. Zoom in a little there. No, that's doing more to the outside shape than it is uh, this inside white uh, teardrop. All right, so let's zoom out. I think it's pretty good, pretty close to to the original so those are uh, not as teardrop right there and there as these are zoom in a little bit so I think uh, Illustrator image trace did a pretty good job now of course you'll need to, to work with it as a uh, SVG you'll need to expand it and now you can come in and clean it up but I it did a pretty good job, but I can see these corners here. So let's go here. Oops. And there. And we can just straighten those up. And we can come in and we can make this a little bit more tear shape. There we go. And we could go through this whole thing, but I think you get the, uh, the point of what we're doing here now. And to save as an uh, SVG, just file, export, 
export as and then change it down to SVG. All right, let's go into Inkscape now. All right, so we have the same logo that we imported into Illustrator. Now in Inkscape, we're going to go to Path. We're going to go to Trace Bitmap. And it brings it up over here so we can scale that. There we go. All right. Now, um, I haven't used Inkscape in a long time, but I wanted to make sure you guys knew where to find this function. Uh, I played around with it for an hour, and the best result I got uh, was doing a trace bitmap single scan with the brightness cutoff. And I dropped that down to 0.39. And once you make these changes, you can click there to update it. So we invert the image, turn that off, update. It'll switch it back and forth. But for what we want, this is, this is good. Uh, I did see that this is a lot more pixelated, even if we blow it up here, than what it really is when we apply it. So we'll hit OK to apply it. And now it's created a vectorized version, unlike Illustrator, which turns the image into it and takes away this just creates one on top. So you still have your original JPEG. Uh, the only thing I like uh, about Illustrator better is maybe the node control, the vec vertice points. Um, it's not bad. It's just a preference deal. So I think both softwares have d uh, done a very good job with image trace. In here, I just you add this point to get this corner I'm making. Just select here. Just select uh, where you want to add a node in between two points and then click here to add it. And then we can click here and then to turn this into a corner, we can turn, we can hit this right here, make selected nodes corners. Zoom in. We're still make sure we're connected to that one. Grab this handle. And there we go. And we can just clean up. All right. And see, just that little bit there makes it seem a lot more crisp than that rounded corner there. Which in our original JPEG, it's a little bit more square. So if you're doing someone's logo and you're concerned about that, Inkscape does a pretty good job as well. I would say Illustrator and Inkscape are both on the same level. They're, they're doing a really good job. Uh, I still want to play around with them some more. Uh, Inkscape's some more. Uh, look at colored photos and go over those. But for right now, for black and white, pretty good detail. They both do a great job. Now, I also want to include easel in here because I see a lot of people are using that. Um, I personally don't, but I saw people were saying that, hey, easel had a image trace option as well. So I just opened this today. I haven't played around with it. I haven't even looked at the pro features. This is just the basic program. So what I did find is you, I, if I'm wrong, correct me, but I have not found a way yet to modify anchor points. Um, but again, I've spent probably 10 minutes doing this. All right, let's import our image. Gonna upload a file, grab and drag it in there. Okay, we'll upload. All right, not too bad. Uh, it's missing a lot of the inner white parts here. And again, I played around with this and about the best I could get this was setting the threshold to about 17, uh, leaving the smoothing at 0.5. You can invert it, but I think we're going to be fine with this doing the trace outlines. And again, um, not perfect in there. It's cutting up instead of being two separate pieces, but let's go ahead and import that. Then we can scale it up, move it into the center there, and not too bad. So again, I don't even know what the pro versions are. 
I just heard that Easel had a image in converter. So want to try it out, throw it out to you guys, let you guys see it as well. And that wraps it up for this video. If you guys want to see more videos like this, hit that like and subscribe button. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. And until next time, keep making stuff.